Well, so I try to look at this logically. First of all, the number is not so high that you can do some real good studies. And when you do the studies, you start getting debating the studies more than actually the problem. So first concept was, you know, it's like a pelvic varicosity, very much like varicose veins, uh, or varicose seals. So if that's happening, then why don't we see this in men? We don't see May Turner in men. The other challenge is if the venous compression of the iliac vein and May Turner is causing pelvic congestion, then every May Turner without ovarian vein reflux should have pelvic congestion syndrome and they should have all this pain. They don't. So to me, they are, are they happening together? I mean, do I have a very firm opinion? No, this is just thinking it through. And the next part of this is if varicose seals occur in men and it's testicular vein reflux, in women it's ovarian vein reflux, those men don't have iliac vein occlusions or we've never checked. And we then have patients who have all these iliac vein occlusions, we treat all these women, they've got all these problems, no pelvic congestion. So there's something else going on. So let's look at pelvic congestion for just quickly a couple of minutes here. It's very underdiagnosed, poorly managed. These patients bound, bounce from doctor to doctor. They want to be pain-free. They're young women, usually childbearing age. They've been you know, quoted as, you've got psychiatric problems, as many as 10 million people. It's a personal burden, and I've treated a few. They come from all over, uh, some from out of state, young, hurts their marital life, hurts their sex life, their love life, and it does so many, creates so many other problems. And it happens after pregnancy more often so where's that correlation with the iliac vein again? So I started thinking through that, and you also land up getting vulvular varicosities as well. So if they were getting vulvular varicosities, every May turner should have vulvular varicosities. We don't. So I, in my mind, there are two problems happening together. They happen to be common together in women. So you should check both, in my opinion. And there are some practical factors that come into play as well. A lot of ovarian vein occlusions and treatment of pelvic congestion is not aggressively pushed because guess what? Nobody pays for it. And none of the insurance companies pay for it. They're all considered experimental. I don't think Medicare also pays for it. People kind of get by, some get paid, some don't, some just don't check. So with all these symptoms that happen in pelvic congestion syndrome, Every May Turner should have this if this was only because of pelvic vein occlusion, and it doesn't. And so how, is, how does one explain that? Uh, all the pelvic pain that we see in these patients, we should be seeing in May Turner as well. And they get intermittent episodes of sharp, staring pain. They go to the ER all the time. We don't see this in all the May Turner syndromes. And oftentimes, their evaluation is completely negative. So, you know, they go through birth control pills, they go through NSAIDs. And I thought this through because I actually had these young patients who were going through all these problems. And then when you look at kind of the mechanism, obviously now with IVIS, we go in and examine. So what I've started to do is a lot of times I would do it from the jugular, but I'll go in through the iliacs, do the IVIS, check that, and check ovarian vein. I know I'm going to eat the embolization part of it if they have concomitant any significant iliac vein occlusive disease, I'm going to fix this. Now on the other hand, if the patient has ovarian vein reflux and mild stenosis and has all these symptoms, what are you going to do there? Now, and, and then check, is there really a renal vein stenosis and is that really collateral? So it's a very common but undertreated and underdiagnosed condition, number one. Second, on top of that, there's no financial and economic incentive to push, whether it's industry, whether it's academia, all the people doing the cases, to kind of manage this into some kind of study or registry, et cetera. And you can see they go to gynecologists, a lot of them get pelvic studies, they land up with all kinds of, and they first go to gynecologists, and they're not part of this discussion at all. So if they land up with us, so if there are 10 million women in the United States suffering from this annually, why aren't we seeing all those? Those are numbers like varicose veins, and we're not. 
and the gynecologists are just not part of this discussion as well. So when I see these patients, they have pain. I'm, I'm not going to jump in and embolize everything, anything. I'm using the uh, first the clinical history and diagnosis part of it to go through all of this, exclude all the other causes, make sure they've they've uh, met up with the gynecologist, looked at everything else, got the right studies, there's no other pelvic inflammatory disease, et cetera. If they have vulva varicosities, then you start looking at this. And I thought this through again as I was kind of evaluating this and going, if this, the vulva varicosities are only from the iliac vein occlusion, why don't we see this again in every Mayturner syndrome? We don't. And the other side is wide open. And when you see these patients, you see large veins like this. Not every May Turner has it. Their legs swell up immediately, et cetera. So CT scan will catch it with contrast. MRI catches it. A lot of these patients are scoped by the gynecologist before because they're going through all this pelvic pain. They go through postcoital pain. They go through all this stuff. And you have MRIs being done too. And uh, so that bottom line is you look at MR venograms, you look at all these studies. Now, I don't have enough data because we just don't have enough patients to say, if you just embolize this, is it better? But if you embolize this alone, and these patients had a iliac vein occlusion, you're not going to get the relief. So the bottom line is, do the medical treatment, make sure they've gone through all of this, they don't land up with an unnecessary hysterectomy, check to make sure that you actually have ovarian vein reflux. It is severe enough and that you evaluate the May Turner and they basically look for a stenosis. If it is, and they both exist, I would treat both. I would treat both at the same time, because if I was a patient, I don't want to come in once for one thing and once for another thing. And the second is, for you as a treating physician, if you're really treating this and you only do the ovarian vein embolization, some of those coils are very expensive, and I'm sure you've had some of these f folks selling you the detachable coils, et cetera, if you're paying for this in an OBL setting, you realize it's a few thousand dollars out of your pocket. You've got all your other costs, and you're not getting paid for this. Insurance companies, especially on the plan, will sometimes tell you, yes, you have, they're eligible. That doesn't mean they're paying for it. They'll say, even give you pre-approval, but all their clauses say it is subject to review and does not guarantee payment. Then they review the case, and actually, if you look up their guidelines, all of them, United, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and I think Medicare is also somewhere there's a guideline and each carrier is different, says that this is considered experimental. And at that time, I check if they have May Turner, you do it. Now, if you see just mild reflux and we have not evaluated them through proper history, proper imaging, evaluation, excluding all the other conditions, uh, making sure there's no psychogenic component to this, and jump into an embolization just for the heck of it, I won't say that's the answer. You shouldn't do that. Uh, and also make sure that there is no uh, uh, venous comp iliac venous component to it, because there are complications. There are potential problems that are associated with this that we don't want to be uh, caught up in. So in conclusion, I would say evaluate for both. If you have ovarian vein reflux and it's significant, you see it on the imaging, treat it. At the same time, check with IVIS, especially, not just a venogram. It can be very, uh, can fool you, get the right size, and then treat that appropriately together. And if you are going to, treat them both at the same time. Thank you.